everybody, this is Zach from Now You Know. We are heading into Cambridge, Massachusetts this morning to go bring Sparky to the MIT Autonomous Drivers Study. Um, that is where they are going to put cameras all throughout the cockpit of the um, of Sparky, and they are going to start studying me or whoever's driving Sparky to see if there's some effect that autonomous driving has on the driver. So. Let's go down there and check it out. So I'm here with Dan and Lex at the MIT study. Um, they're about to take Sparky from me and uh, hope, hope to get it back in one piece, guys. Um, they're gonna be ripping it apart, right? Just ripping panels off. Um, what are you gonna be doing to it? Same thing we always do at MIT. We're gonna rip the car apart and install some awesome equipment in it. Uh, just kidding, we're not ripping anything <laughs> apart, don't worry. Sparky will be okay. Um, so yeah. you're putting some cameras in? Some, some cameras in to study driver behavior uh, when you're using autopilot and not. Uh, because Tesla is an amazing vehicle, so we want to study uh, how your behavior changes as you experience this amazing vehicle. Cool. All right. Well, I trust you guys. You must trust early. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So we're heading up to Lex's office here in a building that is soon going to be destroyed. There's no windows here. Ah. I like to keep us in the dark. <laughs> data, just strictly data. And so you guys started about nine months ago doing this? Yeah, about nine months ago we have 10 Teslas so far. Your number, if you choose to join, <laughs> number 11. All right. Now playing for Tesla, number 11, Sparky. Because we're recording uh, tens of terabytes of data. Wow. Uh, so we want to make sure None of that is ever leaked. None of it if it needs to be removed, it's removed. If it's requested by the subject to remove it. So we're using computer vision to extract everything. So we don't want human eyes on uh, any of the video. We want computers to process all the video oh. so that we can study aggregate driver behavior. Uh, we're not interested in specific situations of how you really any one person behaves. We want to really do, you know, hundreds of drivers and see if uh, autopilot makes you more drowsy or less drowsy, more attentive, less attentive, and how can we make uh, uh, the future autopilot 9.0 better. Nice. I like that you're already thinking ahead of, of 9.0. All right, so we just finished up all the paperwork. Uh, these guys, do they look trustworthy to you? I don't know. They're going to take my car for a while. We'll see if we get it back. You guys you going anywhere this week? You're driving down in New Jersey or something? Or, yeah, yeah, Jersey. Yeah. Mexico. There and back. Awesome. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> awesome. We'll be back Get it tested out, days. right? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Sure we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. All right, we're going for a little walk while Lex and Dan tear apart Sparky. All right, so we're just passing by this really cool device, which is a quick charging station, solar powered for your devices. It's made by a company called Sufa SD Lab. And uh, you just sit here and you plug in to the USB ports right here. Isn't that cool? Of course there's a giant tank of liquid carbon dioxide. Why wouldn't there be? This wall encrusted in a metal cage. Viewers, comments, answers? So since we were dropping off Sparky at MIT, we took advantage of the fact that we were in Kendall Square and we decided to go first to the MIT Museum, which is just around the corner. MIT Museum, great exhibits there to check out, awesome bookstore and gift shop. Then we went uh, around the corner to the uh, MIT Press Bookstore, which is full of books you're not going to find anywhere else. Also the MIT Coop, which is across the street from that, uh, again full of great gift ideas, awesome books. And then there's just a plethora of amazing restaurants in that area. So definitely take advantage of the fact that you're in Kendall Square if you're going to be dropping off your car for some work at the MIT study. So the guys are finishing up back here, checking out the software to make sure that it works. Looks like Sparky's all in one piece. Hey, look it, we got a camera over here. Camera on the dash. We got a camera over here, which you can barely even see. And we got a camera over here. Cool, I'll have to have Lex show me how all this works. That's what you see from the front. It really doesn't stand out at all. So Dan, just explain to me, so this camera here is going to be pointing at my face or the driver's face. That's correct. And it's going to be mainly getting my eyes. Yep, like so your, your, your face, so your, everything from your chin all the way up to your forehead. Okay. So we're able to detect your eyes as well as eyebrows, the shape of your face, the nose, uh, everything like that. Yeah. Okay, and so like if I were driving one day and started to like nod off, the, the computer algorithm would kind of pick up on that. Yep, definitely. That's cool. And then there's a camera 
here yep. and what's that one all about? So this one is actually capturing not only the dashboard meeting the instrument cluster but also your hands on the wheel as well as your lap. So whether you're using the uh, technology in the car, if you're driving with autopilot and you have one hand on the wheel and not both hands, we'll be able to detect that as well. Oh, so you can always see whether my hands are on or off. So that's a great, okay, gotcha. And then lastly, there is one camera that's hiding over there. And what is that guy doing? That's just facing out of the front of the car. That's mostly for validation. So we know what's going on around the car. Gotcha. Um, if we ever need to figure out in some sort of scenario. Like what was he doing there? Exactly. Gotcha, awesome. Yep. Thank you. So are you guys looking for more Tesla volunteers? Absolutely, or especially in the Boston area. Yeah. Uh, if you're willing to come down to MIT, and even get an MIT tour if you like. Oh, uh, MIT tour, awesome. It's not as exciting as it <laughs> It's real exciting is what Lex just said. And you get free parking spot in Cambridge, which is worth the price of admission That's alone. Right. Plus they pay you to do this, so. That's right. You know, most people that join the study is, you know, a thousand bucks is nice, but it's mostly just to help understand how to make this thing as safe as possible. Right. So we've got the cameras all installed. Mm -hmm. um, I've already driven around for a couple days now with the with the cameras and I I I notice them there. I think about it because one's right on the dash in front of me. Mm -hmm. I've used um, so basically what they told me was um, whenever I think there's a situation that they should know about to give them a thumbs up for a second so that the recognition software can like alert them that there's a noteworthy moment and they'll take that moment and actually watch that moment and see what it is. And I've let them record my audio as well. In the beginning, I really thought, I'm not gonna let them record my audio, that would be dumb. But um, they reassured me that basically, um, they're not gonna hear most of the audio, the computers are gonna be doing their processing. It'll only be for me helping them explain a situation. So like, if I give them a thumbs up, which means that there's something they should note, um, it might be something like, oh, gee, Sparky didn't really follow the lines here you know, something like that. And I could say to them, like, wow, look what just happened, or you should really check this out. So it's not necessarily that it's like a good thing. Right, no, and that's the weird thing I thought about thumbs up, um, is that it's kind of like, this worked. Right. You're actually telling them something didn't work. I see. Um, and I, I thought that was funny, so I looked it up. Tell me if this is true in the comments below, if anyone is a Roman uh, Empire file. Did the emperors used to give a thumbs up to save the life of someone in a coliseum or to kill them? I think that this was to save their life and this meant to kill them. I think that nobody knows, um, but the, the best guess is that this was to kill them and this was to save them. Oh, well, so. I'd like to know because I don't know if this really means the good that we think it means. But anyway, they said to me, if you have a better idea of what to do. So I was thinking that maybe like like that or something would be a better thing to do. I don't know. I mean, the thumbs up dub definitely, I mean, I'm sure Catch a computer can read it. Yeah. Right. So so the the people aren't gonna be watching? For the most part, no. Um, there will be two of them, like Lex will be one of the guys who would see some footage if there was something worth seeing. So if you give the thumbs up? Then he will go back and look at that footage. And is it, he'll look at everything before you thumbs up or everything after or everything in between? Or like, you know, your thumbs I think he'll only, see what he needs to see to understand the situation, which is probably a few seconds before it happened and a couple seconds after kind of thing. Okay. Be my guess, but yeah. Um, they, they're they mainly interested in knowing what the effect on the driver is with autopilot. So they want to know, like one big question is, are drivers getting drowsier when they use autopilot? Okay. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I want them to do test me and others is because this is really important data to get. and. I kind of feel special because there's not many autonomous cars out there to begin with mm -hmm. and we're only the first, we're number 11 in this study. So yeah. one thing I put out to you guys is anyone in the Boston area who wants to join this study, I was really on the fence when it first, when I heard about it. We heard about it a few months ago, there was a flyer up at our local service center and Tesla service center. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw it and it's, you know, $1,500 potentially that you could make from the study. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, but then when I heard that they were going to have to put cameras everywhere, I thought, I don't want people touching my Tesla. Yeah. Um, and so I was really on the fence. But then at one of the latest uh, drive events we went to, uh, Jeff was nice enough to show me his Tesla. That we, he's in the study as well. And mm -hmm. so he showed me where the cameras were. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's not too bad. Asked him some questions. Told me how nice the guys were. And in fact, later that day, we met Lex and his crew. That's true. Um, and they were really friendly and nice and answered all my questions. And I was like, oh, 
I have no problems now. So it really is, I can see if you don't know these people. And that's why we're doing this video. We're hoping that by getting to meet the guys, uh, Lex and Dan and all the great guys down there at MIT, that you'll see that they're a great bunch of guys. I trusted them with my car. My car came back fine. Um, if you're on the fence about it too, you should definitely at least give them a call, you know, talk to them, ask right. them your questions um, because when else are you going to get a chance to be part of such an important scientific study? I mean, this is going to affect safety for the next, you know, what, 10 years or something on the yeah. road. So I feel pretty good about it. That's great. Awesome. Now I want to go on more road trips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how are they, how are they, is it, is it uploading the data to the cloud? Good question. Is it? Um, I was a little worried about that because I thought, what happens if I get into an accident and let's say it's my fault and here's all these cameras showing that what I just did was completely my fault, right? Mm -hmm. Or I kill somebody or something, right? Um, the good news is all that data goes into the uh, hard drive, which is in the trunk of the car. So if at any point I don't want them to see that data, I just take that hard drive out and I throw it in a river or I smash it with a hammer and no one will ever see that data. So that can make you feel good. If there's, if you, if you don't want that data shared, you have control of it until you go down to, um, to turn in the data. Okay, so it's on this hard drive that's in the back of your trunk. Yep. How often do they have to sort of clean that off? So every time you turn on autopilot, it turns on the system. He said it would basically hold about a road trip. So if you do road trips all the time, you'd have to go into MIT a lot to get the data retrieved. If you just drive an hour a day or something, then it'll be months before you have to go back down there. Interesting. And they pay you for your time. So every time you drive back into Boston, they pay you for your time to, to take that data off. When the study's over, I think in about six months, I'll have made about $1,000. Wow, that's great. So that's like a new pair of snow tires or something. Yeah. That's great. I mean, all for just driving around like you usually would. And how is the hard drive powered? It's powered off of the battery of the car. And so they said it's about the equivalent of, you know, charging your phone. So it is using a little bit of power, but it's not using a lot of power. And where is it connected to? Um, they do some connections in the front of the car somewhere. I didn't get to see that part, but basically I, I had asked, are you taking like 12 volts off the back here? And they're like, no, we're getting a power connection somewhere in the front. I mean, they know, they know what they're doing. Um, so there's no obvious like wire connections. It's all really well done. Right. Him. And so there's no wires hanging around. I mean, I looked at the footage, there's no like wires hanging down or. No, I thought there was going to be cabin. like kind of a mess of wires with tape and stuff, but no, I mean, you can see a little bit of, you know, a wire going from the camera in the front um, to where it disappears. And you know, that's about it. That's awesome. It really is pretty awesome. The other nice thing is, let's say I did get into an accident um, and I wanted some footage of the event. It's recording it most likely. And so they can give me that footage if I need it. So that's a nice thing. Another thing is, let's say I call them up and I'm like, uh, do not use the footage from Tuesday. They won't use the footage from Tuesday. Um, hmm. So, I mean, I can tell them like, just disregard that and they will, they will follow that order. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. I, I don't think I have any more questions, but if you have more questions, yeah. uh, definitely post them in the comments down below. We'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if you have any other Tesla related questions or whatever, you know, definitely feel free to leave comments. Yeah. And as we find out more about the data from this, uh, you know, down the road, we'll definitely let you know what we find out. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We have a weekly Tesla time news where we talk about Tesla related events. So definitely check that out. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions about the Tesla or whatever, we'd love to do a video on it. So let us know what you want. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.